Welcome back, CX Gang. If you're new here, my name is Sky, and um, today we're talking about perception. And that John works both ways, okay? You say I'm wasting time? Mind your premium business, why don't you? Okay, yes, this is going in my advice I could have used as a kid playlist. Now, this might be a bit random, but is it really? Let's start. For one, perception was the hardest thing to truly understand. No one just breaks it down, opens up, crack open the top and be like, hey, have you heard of perception? Do you know how people perceive you? What really would have been nice to hear is that it goes both ways and it's valuable to know how people perceive you and why that is. Now, it's none of your business to truly concern yourself why they do perceive you, but just to know how did they get to that point of perceiving you in this way what about you is giving off this energy that tells them ugh, you're that way and honestly I could never crack the code I was never bothered by anybody to that degree to where I just needed to know so much about them I truly I don't want to say I didn't care about folks but if it had nothing to do with me it had nothing to do with me truly and I couldn't relate to people who would obsess over others even like famous people don't know why people obsess over famous people i mean they're famous they're cool but i'm not looking at their instagram for hours i'm not <laughs> i don't care <laughs> that much but some people do and some people really have an angle with what they're coming for with their perception for me i was perceived in a lot of different ways Mostly because perception can change. You can change, people can change, perception changes well, love. Knowing how people perceive you and knowing how you can come across is pretty crucial to at least understand. For me, because I genuinely did not care, I genuinely did not know. Throughout high school, maybe the later years of high school, people thought I was high all the time. I mean, in that era of myself. I never smoked a day in my life. I've been sober since birth at this point. Literally have never even had the opportunity to get high. And here are multiple people coming towards me thinking that I'm high, thinking that I'm in school, gone. It wasn't necessarily annoying to some degree. Like I just didn't get why people thought I was high. The most I could connect, because I can only perceive my actions and what I was doing, is because my demeanor was so nonchalant okay life was lifing especially in high school and a girl just did not have the energy to give to anybody i wasn't even entertaining nobody the whole class could be <laughs> throwing a fit and here i am in the background saying when's lunch i carried that demeanor a lot because i didn't want any smug with anybody i didn't want anybody to have a reason to talk to me for real i don't think i was depressed but i was very unhappy i was very not feeling this high school life a lot of that was bs and i knew it at the time you ever just like realize this high school world is really really dumb yeah, I realized that in ninth grade. I tried to have a more positive attitude towards 10th grade. By the time 11th grade hit me, bro, I was done. I had senioritis in my junior year. And I think that nonchalantness, it came from me being so indifferent. I did not care at all. I mean, if you've seen pictures of me, if, if you if you even knew me back in the day when I was in high school, it looked like I didn't care. I lived in two hoodies. And it looked like I wore them back to back to back without ever washing them. I would change the shirt underneath, but I would never take the hoodie off. So would it matter? No. <laughs> that nonchalantness came with the energy of just, I didn't care, but people cared. People cared that I didn't care. And that never, that never hit me. That never ate for me. It's like, can't you tell that I don't want to be here? Then please do not talk to me. Let me continue living my life so I can get to the next class so I can go home. Another thing about perception is that you don't even have to even try to act mysterious, but if you're not openly vulnerable about yourself, like if you don't talk about yourself a lot, you don't talk about your home life, you don't talk about nothing, you literally only talk when you are spoken to type beat, there will be some people you come across who are just drawn to you because you're not that open, because they don't know that much about you. People get uncomfortable when they really don't know shit about you. And even though technically it's none of their business, some people will make it their business to know who you are, bro. They will make it their mission. Okay, and people will test you in various ways, various annoying ways. 
one time in the, is it 10th grade? It was before I moved to that school. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't say that. It was before I moved to that predominantly Caucasian school. I think it was homeroom. It was something, bro. It was that one class where you're supposed to write an essay and that's that whole purpose of that class. You write one essay, thesis, three paragraphs and a conclusion and you're done. Man, I'm so good at writing essays that quickly, bro. It just had to take a whole paper page and you turn that in and you were done. One of those days I ran through the prompt did the essay and I was just waiting for the bell to ring because that was the last class and you could go home right after. Tell me why, and I don't know if this girl was like set up to do this, but homegirl, <laughs> not homegirl, was not friends with this girl, did not have any reason to talk to this girl for real. She came up to me and asked me to fight her. I don't think I've ever been in a fight in my life really. At my adult age, I don't think I've ever really been in a fight. And when she asked me that, I just didn't know what to respond with. Like the actual act of her asking me, like she wanted to fight, she wanted to see if I could fight or like how would I fight or something. Something in that realm, I could not understand, like get to grips. Why would she physically ask me to fight her? Now again, very nonchalant at this time, really didn't care, really just wanted to do my work, get it done and get home tight deep. Like I had no interest in this school thing. Nobody really, nobody really ate that. Nobody really took that and be like, mm, her interest is elsewhere. No, they needed to know how I fight. Yes, and she was black. Babes, I didn't fight her. I didn't fight her because one, I truly felt like that wasn't her idea. I felt like she was being set up Okay, set up for her benefit alone. She was gonna take this fist, this five finger fist for somebody else's enjoyment. Now she definitely did this loud enough to where not only were the students aware that she was trying to provoke a fight from me, but the teacher was aware as well. Bro, this is why I had to leave that school. This is how I know that school was thrown off. So the teacher, she was really trying to let it slide. Like she wanted to know what would happen too. When I tell you, that girl had no business trying to pick a fight with me for real. I'm violent, for real, bro. <laughs> I'm silent because I'm violent. But nobody knew that. I was very much the quiet girl and people wanted to know. Now, don't get me wrong, I was a built girl. I'm physically taller than most girls, bigger bulk than most other girls. So her life was at risk, Larky. <laughs> But at the time, I wasn't trying to get in no beef. I wasn't trying to get in no mess. I wasn't trying to do any of that. One, because at the time, my home life, yeah, very stressful. I was not trying to have a situation to pull my mom out from work or to get suspended or to even just be her so bad that I would get expelled, bro. It wasn't the fact that I didn't wanna fight her. It wasn't the fact that I wouldn't fight her. It was the fact that she was asking for something way bigger than what she probably had, <laughs> what she really had anticipated, okay? I don't, I really felt for this girl. I really don't think she knew what she was getting herself into. So I hit the automatic no. Like, I'm really not trying to fight you. You do not wanna know what I got. I wasn't carrying nothing, but I would've, I would have sent her to the hospital, okay? She did not comprehend this. She did not, and I felt this, but I did not know how to convince her that she did not want this. She wanted it so, she wanted to know so bad. What you want to go home with a broken nose for? Why? Okay, so the way that I ended the situation, cause she did this right before the bell had rang. Right before like there was the time we were all lining up at the door, we were ready to go. This girl wanted a fight. And I wouldn't give it to her. I didn't give it to her. What I told her was, is that if you try me, my peoples will handle you. AKA my grandmother. My grandmother, first of all, don't, don't play with my grandmother. Cause my grandma don't play with me. And I really told her that. I was really explaining like, hey, this ain't the smoke you want, for real. And she kept on trying to antagonize me, trying to antagonize me. I kept telling her, babes, this is what you want. That aggravated me a good bit. I was fairly close to really just beating this girl's ass. She wanted to, I would have, but I was more concerned about the consequences after because not only would I have shown her how violent I actually was, but I would have gotten in trouble for it too. I didn't want the smoke. If you wanted to fight me, do it outside in the parking lot where I want. <laughs> do it outside in the parking lot of Wendy's. Okay, if you really want, 
If you really want to smoke, do it where you can't get saved, bitch. Do it where the police have to come. Don't get the principal. Don't get the teacher saying, all right, all right, that's enough now. No, never provoke people like that. I don't know why she felt the need to do that. I was so concerned for her, like to the point where I knew she was set up. I knew somebody set her up. Whoever told her to do that, disgusting. Can't handle people like that. I can't. I didn't end up fighting her. The bell, we prolonged it to that point. The bell rang, we got to leave. I was trying to eliminate the part where I got suspended. Eliminate the part where I possibly could have gotten expelled, would have had my mom needed to come off work, and that was not the thing to do. I was not trying to get my mom to come off of work, to come and get me, and to handle whatever that was. No, she was already stressed enough at that time. Having her even risk her job for getting off early to handle whatever I had to go through because of this dumb bitch really is what kept me in my peace <laughs> my peaceful mode because I didn't I didn't want to even evoke the energy it took to beat somebody that you know how much energy you have to you have to evoke to beat somebody to beat somebody I wasn't even mad bro she just wanted the smoke y'all don't ever provoke anybody you literally do not know what people are going through at home what people are going through on the side like do not provoke nobody you you don't know what people are capable of please I ask you never to do what this dumb bitch did. I really think this girl is set to, I'ma keep saying it. This girl was set up to get her ass beat, okay? And I just picked up the vibes that she was being set up for this because she she was kind of the um, one to bully, the go-to, um, <laughs> I never bullied anybody. But she wasn't the most liked and people knew that. I didn't participate in it. I didn't evoke uh, anything. I just, and I didn't really, I wasn't really friends with her either, okay? Had nothing to do with her. Did not want anything to do with her. That was really to probably provoke a reaction to see how I would react. I think now that I'm older, I can see that from a mile away. Back then, I didn't know how far people would go to like, see who you are, to like test the waters with you, to like, to really just get into a peak of who are you? Like, are you the type of, are you the type of person to scratch? Are you the type of person to, and that was the way to do it, I guess. To see how I would fight. Would I fight like I'm from the hood? Because I'm not, okay? I'm from the suburbs, but do not be testing suburb bitches. We throw it off because we are left in the suburb by ourselves. Honestly, looking back at it, I should have beat her ass. <laughs> she would never know how lucky she got for real. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to risk my mom's job, okay? I needed to stay in that school just a little bit longer till things got aligned back at home so I could fix the living situation I was in. I could fix the whole like setup, how I get to school, how I get back. It was, it was a mess. Okay, but that event started to give me like pieces and chunks of like how people perceive me or how important it is to peep the way people perceive me. I learned very early that I'm not one of the normal bitches. Okay, and for a good minute, I really did try to be normal because society teaches you to be that way. But once I saw that shit was not happening for me, I was not worried about it. I tried, but I, I just wasn't, I just wasn't gonna be normal. Like I didn't look normal. I physically couldn't fit the stature. I was interested in different things. I didn't care about the stuff the popular girls were into. I did not care. I did not care. And I didn't care that I didn't care. And that set bitches off. They could understand why I was so confidently walking in my path of weirdness. They didn't get it and they wanted to know and they would try me any way possible. It's also important to learn how your perception from the view of others can change. Now this didn't happen to me until like the glow up to where I eventually s not mm. There was a long point where I didn't really care about my physical appearance. Like I cared about it when I was to myself and I had the freedom to be who I was in my own little world, in my own little bubble. But at school, which was a lot of part of my life, like I've, I've been in school 18 years. I've been in some form of education for 18 years and I'm only 23 years old. Like, trust me, school was not the place I was happiest. 
Yeah, every every aspect of me showed that. Every aspect of me displayed that. I did not truly care. So you you saw I did not care. I was not trying and nor would I ever. But eventually, my looks became my looks. Okay, the face card never declines. And to a degree, I sort of knew this because... Again, people's perception of me would change. Guys who would go out of their way to bully me, bully, had the fattest crush on me. The fattest. And because it didn't occur to me that people really try to normalize how boys be bullying girls because they like them, it's their way of like showing their crush or whatever, stop normalizing that shit. That was not fun or funny. No, because by the end of it, by the time I figured out that they had a big crush on me and was covering it up by literally bullying me, I was so disgusted at the idea that you would 180 go from hating me to fully liking my ass. Like, bruh, bruh. It had to happen a couple of times. A couple, a couple of times for me to pick this up. Okay, the first time it happened was in third grade. Yes, yes, as young as third grade. Tell me why, <laughs> bruh. It was this kid, he had a, there was something wrong with him. I forgot what the fuck it was. <laughs> He was one of them disabled kids, okay? I think he had like an eye thing. I really forgot what the fuck was wrong with him, bro. And it wasn't nothing like really wrong with him. He just had like an eye deformity or something. Something. He had like a lazy eye something. I don't know. Some kids would bully him for it. I personally never bullied anybody. Because when did I ever? Now, because of his eye, people didn't like him. He, he, he definitely received bullying, as all people with who, who looks different, who are different, receive the bullying. I wasn't one to participate in the bullying, but I, again, I didn't care to like go out of my way to make him my friend type beat. Like, I didn't, I didn't care. I was indifferent. Indifferent. And somehow he caught wave of that and wanted to start beef with me. I don't know how we got into it, the way we got into it. He must just assume that I was one of the people who was willing to bully him. But he probably peeped that I, it wasn't me. I didn't give a fuck like that. And I think somewhere along that line where he picked up that it, I wasn't a part of the bullying crowd, he started to like me. He started to like my ass. And it slowly was like low-key, like uh, nobody knew. And then he started telling folks around me and then folks started telling me like, oh, he liked you. I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. Not because his deformed ass eye. Trust me, I do not give a fuck. I don't give a fuck, for real. For real, okay? Be disabled. One of my best friends, you know, this is off topic, but I didn't care about people with disabilities. I didn't care about people who look different. You, it literally did not matter. At most, I would be curious and probably ask some dumbass kid questions, but that's because I genuinely wouldn't know. I knew this one kid in the same grade, in the same class. He was, he was on the spectrum. He was special ed. He was, he was sped, okay? What other way you want me to say it? He was sped. And he, <laughs> he would go out of his way to greet me. He was very nice to me. Every time I was late to class, he would go out of his way to be like, Hey, Sky. He would just make my day sometimes. He would really go out of his way to like greet me as I came in late and felt awkward like everybody else was staring at me. He went out of his way to say hi. Just hi. And sometimes I would share my chips with him, bro. He was so nice to me. He would go out of his way to be nice to me. I would share my bags of chips with him, bro. I think his family was kind of poor, but and he wanted some chips, bro. <laughs> and I always had a bag of chips. Okay, that's what I survived on. A bag of chips. I have no hate for the disabled, okay? For the speds, none of them. Bro, I don't know how you call it, bro. I'm gonna sound like a, like a... The second time that bullshit happened to me was around ninth grade, I wanna say? And there was this kid. Should I dox his name? Cause I remember that boy's name. That bulbous head boy ass name. <laughs> Let me not expose his ass, just in case he's he's still recovering. But uh, you know who you are. You probably don't even watch me. But if you do, because if I blow up one of these days and you actually go through this and see me, yeah, you? Now I'm not gonna lie. He was a part of a, his sector of people. He wanted to be a part of the cool kids, the popular kids, which was really just the kids who had money. That's all it was. That's all it took. The kids who had money. He, he came from a, a fairly wealthier family. Not too wealthy. Not too wealthy. He just had a slightly bit more, okay? 
slightly. I don't know what was his problem for real. I think he would he would get in trouble a lot. Like he would go out of his way to be like a bad bad kid bro. Like doing too much, always talking, always out his seat, always playing bro. He he was one of them kids who wasn't getting attention at home type beat. Like he something was he wasn't thrown off. Like he was he was here but he acted in a way as if he just he needed more than that. <laughs> He acted a fool by the time he got to school, like, and had the most energy to do so. The audacity of this boy. He, he would be annoying at times. To a degree, he would be annoying. There was a point in school where it stopped being funny. And so he stopped being like the class clown and started being kind of annoying. And I think by the time, I, I really forgot, but it's either ninth or 10th grade that he directed his energy towards me and tried to start bullying me first of all he was really not in the place to bully me okay he was an easily bullyable kid he probably got a lot of <laughs> he probably got a lot of flack for the way he just was just the way he existed period should i describe him bro he was kind of short he was light skinned his <laughs> i think he had a couple of punishments that were to shave his head bald <laughs> Being bad, being so bad in class to where his punishment was to shave his hair off. And let me tell you, his head, bulbous. Bulbous. <laughs> I promise you. And yeah, after his shenanigans got tiring, he started directing his energy towards me. Now, don't know why he picked me. Again, nonchalant, didn't care. Actually, I kind of did care at this point. At this point, I had my little core friend group. We were like, not outcasts, because we weren't weirdos, but we were just not, we didn't participate in the collective, like main people, popular people, people with money. We didn't care. We were chilling. We were always chill. My group was chill. I, I didn't do all that. You're doing too much. We don't do that. And we made good grades because we were smart. You probably wish you were in my friend group for real. He would just be sly and try to bully me. The bullying at that point didn't work for me because I had gained, I guess I had gained more confidence in myself and he just wasn't the type to really like infuriate me. Like, bitch, calm down. Calm your four foot nine self down. I'm not trying to be heightist. I was like five foot seven in the sixth grade. Babes, I was always gonna be tall, period. And one day, I just kinda noticed more and more of his like bullying became more about my body more than anything. You know, he was talking about my hair, he was talking about my face, about the way I dress. No, these little jabs were just about my body. Babes, why are you paying that much attention to my figure? You seem like you care a little bit too much. There were a few times that I pointed that out to this boy and he was so flabbergasted. It really shut him up. And after that, I started seeing the exposés of, and I started getting on to the, to the clue that he liked me. I think one day I straight up just said that like, hey, you speaking a lot about my body. Like, do you like me? You, itch you see something you like? After that, he really shut the fuck up. <laughs> like after I exposed his ass, he really stopped bullying me. He really stopped talking to me or I don't know, I also transferred, but he really stopped the bullying. He really stopped trying me. That was it. And I don't know if I ended up hurting that boy's feelings because what I said was what I said. No cap, no ballpoint pen, but yes, that was some bullshit, bro. To me, on my perspective, I never understood why boys, cause that's what they were, little boys, would do that shit. It didn't occur to me like, if you liked me, say that. And I was a bold bitch too. Like if I ever liked somebody, I told them. All those experiences gave me the added adaptation to really realize how do people perceive me? And it's not gonna be the, the same throughout. People are really gonna experience you differently based on their own environment and how in whatever situation they're coming from. People really try to piece together who you are. And if you're not necessarily open with that, they might even target you because you're not as open with that and the perception varies drastically okay one time i was at work this was back when i worked at golden chick this one boy my co-worker he straight up told me that he thought i lived in a two-parent family household a two-story brick household with a two-parent income i don't even know how to say that correctly he could not have been more wrong not only was that all incorrect but he made these assumptions completely based on how i look Cause that's all he had. And I knew this because I didn't share my personal life at work. Like I'm there to put chicken in boxes. I'm there to make my $7.75 an hour, babes. I didn't have time to talk to these 
folks. We're not friends, we're co-workers. Help me do this work. And it was all based on looks and looks alone. And I had a lot of different attributes about me, okay? When it came to the uniform, I wasn't wearing like the regular like non-slip shoe like everybody else wears. I wore the non-slip boots because I just liked the way they looked better. It was honestly a aesthetics thing. I did not like the off-brand looking, converse looking, non-slip. And that's what everybody wore. Like literally everybody else had like that, that version of shoe. But it was like the uniform said non-slip shoe. They didn't necessarily say it had to be this, it had to be that, no. Babes, when I tell you those boots were from Walmart, and these bitches were hating over my boots I got from Walmart. And it could have been the hair too. I always had issues with my hair because working in the restaurant setting, I had to wear a hairnet. I had to have like multiple hairnets to fit all my hair in. And then they had to pick a fight with me based on like the little cap. Everybody else in that john had like a little visor. You know, the portion that's the, the lid up top, the rest is open. Yeah, I needed that opening because I had so much hair. But they definitely tried to give me that little ball cap as if that was gonna fit all of this. That really came from a, another story. Like, genuinely, the managers there, two out of the three managers there tried to bully me and was successful because a bitch quit. But honestly, that was a younger me. I didn't, I didn't know that people continued the bullying, the high school BS stuff at work. Babes, we're here for a, a job. Why are you having personal vendettas against me? You make four more dollars than I do. Stop acting like you run this bitch. <laughs> Yeah, bro, but I had a car at the time too. Like people, people take in all aspects of what they can get from you based off every aspect, like every aspect there is of you. Even if you don't speak of who you are, even if you don't openly share about the type of person you are, people will make the type of presumptions they want to against your will type B. And that was a really hard pill to swallow. Like I did not get why people would either A, be just indifferent, have no idea about me. Like you didn't need to know about me to work there. Like do your job, focus on what you're supposed to do. Mind the business that pays you please. But no, it was always an interest, always the topic of interest. Like babes, get a hobby. Stop being so concerned. Perception, it isn't just the outside aesthetics of you, it's also your demeanor and your energy that comes across of the type of person you are. I have a mean mug, okay? My resting bitch face be resting in bitch. I'm a very goofy person. If you get to know me, it'll it'll be hard not to laugh when you're around me, for real. I know that sounds like I'm being funny, but I'm, I'm being dead ass. But not everybody can take my type of humor, okay? I can get kind of dark with it. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And I know that, and I'm cool with that. But like, if I'm not your cup of tea, babes, I don't want to interact with you. I'll do the bare minimum of conversation with you. You do not have to know me, for real. I'm a chill, respectable person, but some people need to have an end. Some people need to know a flaw. Some people need to know something that's wrong with you so they can feel comfortable with themselves. And they will do anything and everything to get that sort of perception from you. They'll make up whatever, whatever dialogue they need to make up for themselves. They will fill in the blanks themselves. In my whole life, I never got why. I can never figure out why. But honestly, the reason must be probably personal because... Ain't no reason you really need to know who I am for real. It applies to all relationships you come to. Friendships, romantic relationships, family relations. I always had to be aware of the position they wanted me to play. Being myself was an option, but 99% of the time, people did not like that shit. Mm -mm, it didn't fit. It didn't fit the script they already wrote up for me and they didn't like me to play it. And sometimes, especially in my younger years, I would play the role that I would think they want me to play just to get them off my back for real. I do not like confrontation. I don't like people, but I also have a hard time really existing in a way that doesn't pertain to my actual self being. I'm so neurodivergent that I literally have a hard time playing an NPC character. I do not mesh well with the group. I literally have a mind of my own and I don't, <laughs> I don't like adjusting that to other people. You wouldn't adjust for me. Why do I have to adjust for you? Make it make sense, Cheryl. And lastly, I would like to reiterate that there is some benefit into peeping how people perceive you. It might be hard, it might take a few times, it might take a few rounds of people to really gather the information you need to see how you perceived. And don't be afraid of that changing over time, because trust me, it changes. Now, 
I realized that a portion of me is intimidating. A portion of me is really um, infuriating to a lot of folks. I make a lot of folks jealous for really no reason. And that can sound like I'm full of myself, but my personal experience has told me up until this point, people be hating. Lay off the haterade, please. Please. Jealousy is not a good color on you, babes. And for a long time, I couldn't figure out why, okay? Half the time, I wasn't as wealthy as you thought I was. Half the time, I didn't have all the nice stuff you thought I did. I just knew how to do my hair and put on the right outfit, babes. People are even jealous of the hair for real. I didn't have the money to buy weaves and wigs and sew-ins and hair extensions. I grew my hair because I wouldn't have nothing else, babes. It wasn't a choice. I get so sick of that shit. People are like, people are always up my ass too. Like they don't know the journey behind me and my hair. It's literally a hair journey, which I can make a I can make a video about. Get into how this became this. Well, it wasn't always like that, and I didn't know. Well, I wasn't aware that people would be so into my hair like that. People would really care about my hair for real. It's a huge topic and it's a it's a huge part of me. Like, it's a part of my aesthetic now. Like, I can't just pretend like my hair isn't significant. Don't let the world shape you, but be aware that your environment does take a part into how you exist. Okay, you don't have to always take in everything that's coming towards you, but do know that has that has a part to play and you'll learn throughout life how to move throughout life by the environment you're in. You're given a deck of cards and you gotta play them. But yes, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me. But I hope that cleared up some things. Maybe you've gained some things. Comment down below if you learned anything or comment down below, period, bro. <laughs> Nobody be commenting for real. <laughs> if any of this made sense, if you related to any of this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Check me out on my other social media platforms. It's at MK underscore LOLS. That's what TikTok and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.